Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Jacques. And I'm Swati of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. According to the Organ Procurement and Transplantation Network, an average of 21 people die each day waiting for a transplant. So what happens when a donor that is positive for a multidrug resistant organism, MDRO, such as methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus or MRSA, is detected in the donor? You know, that's a real problem. One donor can save eight lives, so it creates a conundrum to transplant or not to transplant. You know, today we're going to look at a case study by the CDC to look into exactly this issue. Wendt et al. of the CDC describes two cases of donor-derived MRSA infection that developed after solid organ transplantations from a common donor that died from acute MRSA endocarditis. Sequencing was used to perform whole genome sequencing of the bacterium to determine the origin of the infection and compare between donor and recipient MRSA infection. Now, deep sequencing confirmed that the infection was transmitted to the recipient post-transplantation of donor-infected organs. It is crucial to make sure that donors do not transmit infections during transplantation, as a recipient is immunosuppressed and even a small number of microbes can be fatal. You know, and what's surprising is that the donor was capable of transmitting the infection despite being treated with various antibiotics for two weeks according to standard protocol. Yeah, you know, the real problem is that these so-called superbugs can survive these antibiotic treatments, and that's why they're called superbugs. Mm -hmm. And the paper by Wendt et al. proposed options to either increase the treatment course for two, four weeks ultimately, or to treat even more or use even more potent antibiotics. And none of those options are really that great. You know, ideally, I think you need an effective antibiotic that does not encourage um, antibiotic resistance. You know, that's absolutely true. Have you seen the paper by uh, Ling et al.? Mm -hmm. They identify a new antibiotic that's effective in targeting multidrug resistant organisms. You're talking about Texicobactin. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You know, I didn't know that in the 1960s, most antibiotics were screened for from microorganisms in the soil. You know, that's true. That was the 60s for you. <laughs> they, and they mined the soil for new antibiotics, but could not find any novel antibiotic-producing microbes. They, they kind of mined the whole system out. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they moved on to synthetic approaches. But those synthetic approaches never quite lived up to their expectations. You know, and what's interesting is if nature gives us a problem, she also gives us the solution. Uncultured bacteria make up 99% of all species in external environments, and Lingetol exploit this untapped natural resource to search for new antibiotics that might work better than current treatments. Previously, these microbes could not be cultured in labs, and it was tedious to screen for them. In this case, researchers developed the methods to grow these organisms and to culture them in situ, and uh, growing them in their natural environment, but with some specific growth factors. So researchers studied the extracts of 10,000 isolates uh, screening for antibacterial activity against Staph aureus in a petri dish. Um, and now an extract from a new species, Eleftheria terrae, showed good activity against Staph aureus, and they sequenced it using the Illumina sequencing technology. You know what's interesting is that from this, this is a, from the group of gram-negative uh, bacteria, and it was really not known to produce antibiotics, so it came as a complete surprise. It did, and you know, antibiotics uh, generally target the building blocks of the bacterial membranes. And there are two major types of bacterial membranes, gram-positive and gram-negative. Did you know that the name Graham comes from Hans Christian Graham? Hmm. And here's the guy who found that the gram-positive microbes could be stained. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Taxobacterin really has excellent activity against gram-positive pathogens, including drug-resistant strains. It's superior to vancomycin, which is very unusual. It's a very effective drug. And it's even more effective at much lower doses. It works by binding to the cell wall precursors, and that disrupts the formation of cell envelope. Now, what's amazing is that in their long-term studies, uh, you know, it failed to produce resistance in Staph aureus and TB strains, and it did not show toxicity to mammalian cells. We cannot say that microbes won't gain resistance, but the authors suggest that Texicobactin, because of its specialized target, might take even longer for resistance to emerge. New and effective antibiotics are critical. It, as a, you need them as a last resort to treat multidrug resistance organisms. And it shows that there's a lot yet more to discover from these uncultured microbes. 
Thanks for watching. That's it for today. And make sure to subscribe to our channel for more episodes. Thank you and have a great day. Bye. Bye.